joined now by our good friend, Sir Elton Hayes from the CNHI Papers and State College, Happy Valley, College Park, uh, wherever else that you're all at, at the same time. I think you're thinking University Park, College Park. University the Park. There's See, that's it's too many confusing. Uh, how many names do they have and what do they represent? So at State College, that's like the government name, if you want to say. Is Happy it the Valley's, city name? Yeah, that's the city name. Happy Valley's the the colloquial name. Um, University Park is the technical name of the campus, since there are a bunch of branch campuses. Um, so I guess three. There, there's your uh, your State College history lesson today. So Happy Valley is just one. Is it unofficial? Just something that someone threw in there? Yeah, exactly. Just had to – always one of those. You always got to have one of those people. We got enough things going on. Now they're all throwing some more stuff in here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's night game on ABC TV. Big deal for Indiana. But we're, everyone's wondering is which Indiana team is going to show up. Is the offense going to be there yet? Uh, they've had a lot of offensive line woes. The offense has not produced like a lot of us expected it was going to. And Penn State, on the other hand – is freaking rolling, man. Their offense is flying behind Sean Clifford. He's a veteran quarterback, and he is slinging the ball. as uh, he averaging like 300 yards a game right now? And then Penn State is averaging another 160 or so on the ground. They Their offense is rolling. It's humming. It's humming. I mean, that was the question everyone had coming into this year. Uh, the Penn State defense, everyone was pretty confident it was going to be fine. Um you know, apart from its troubles last year, the defense did its job. It was the offense that was behind. Um, this year, the offense does not show any signs of um, having any ha uh, hangover from the 2020 season. Uh, I've got a first-year offensive coordinator, Mike Yursich. The players and the offense is responding to him well. It's a quick, fast, um, temp up-tempo offense that prides itself on getting the balls and is getting the ball in as many playmakers' hands as possible, and it's been working for him. I, I guess I wanted to follow up on that real quick. What is kind of the opinion around town of, of Sean Clifford? Because I kind of felt like people were out on him after the Wisconsin game, but then he played so well against Auburn. Is it just kind of inconsistency, or what is the what is the general opinion? There? Uh, they're loving him right now. Um, yeah. You know, in, in 2019, his, his first year as a starter, he came and led him to 11 and two season uh, um, at really good numbers, um, high um, high touchdowns, low turnover rate. Last year, I mean, I mean, four games through last season, he had nine touchdowns to six interceptions. Four games into this season, he's got four touch eight touchdowns with two interceptions. So um, they're happy with him right now. But I think it's fair. Early in the season, everybody was wondering which Tom Clifford are we going to get. We're going to get the 2019 Clifford, the 2020 Clifford. And uh, right now he's showing us the 2021 Clifford is better than both. So. Yeah, he's uh, – him and Peyton Ramsey, uh, former IU quarterback, just – remind me of a lot of you, but I didn't know that they were that far apart year wise. I thought that they were a lot closer together. Yeah, because uh, they're friends, aren't they? They're from the uh, same area down in Cincinnati. Well, they played high school against each other. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah very, very similar style guys. And But uh, yeah, Penn State is getting exactly what they need offensively. Um, defensively, Indiana has been pretty strong. They they have not really struggled a lot uh, this year with some mistakes and Things, but uh, this is going to be probably the greatest test that they've faced. Even I, Iowa was pretty pretty tough, but that's the first game of the year. This is even uh, more difficult, I think, because you're on uh, the road at night in, in a place that uh, you know is is a jacked up environment to begin with. But they have a lot of uh, offensive weapons that can do different things. They run the ball well and pass the ball well, and that is a dangerous team to defend. Yeah. And, and Jim, you know, let's kind of talk about the elephant in the corner right now. Um, you know, I know James Franklin and players this week are saying that they're not looking at this as a revenge game, but you got to think in the back of their mind, you know, Indiana set them on that five game losing streak. You know, I look, it's human to want to get revenge. So um, I understand that's what they're saying. They're towing the company line, but um, I, you know, it's personal for those guys, I believe. Is there a I picture? Think, is there a picture of Michael Penix stretching for the the two point conversion somewhere in the in the uh, team facility? <laughs> I, I haven't seen it yet, but I, maybe they rolled it out on Monday. Huh. Yeah, I'm always. This is a game, that, but it's also a game that may surprise the hell out of us. Uh, maybe this is the game where Indiana 
offensive line has, starts to gel. And Michael Penix, because Michael Penix looked a lot better last week. He looked more comfortable. It's definitely the most comfortable he has looked. Uh, although Indiana losing DJ Matthews, that's a huge loss for them because he definitely. was really filling a nice niche and allowing them, I think, to grow that passing game out. Indiana's going to have to run the ball on Penn State, and their running game with Stephen Carr has been okay. But, Dylan, I think that when they get into the second half, I don't know if it's the line wearing down, but his carries or his averages usually go from four and five yards a carry down into twos and threes in the second by the time the second half the game ends. Yeah, I think I think that's right. And, and we've seen Carr is very, very good. Like Carr has been as advertised. He's as good as everyone said he was. The line is just not create a whole lot of holes for him. So that, that's going to be the question is, can they run the ball against as Elton said, a very, very good Penn State defense? Well, that's one of the issues that's Penn State. I, mean, I know it kind of defies logic right now. Um, going into the season, everyone touted the running back group as being, you know, the team's strength. Uh, it's the, the uh, running back unit hasn't been that good this year. Um, I believe they ran for 80 yards against Auburn a couple weeks ago. Struggled last week against Villanova. So we'll, we'll see. But that's something that I'm keeping my eye, eye on is that offensive line, uh, Penn State's offensive line. Can they get enough push against that Indiana defensive line and open some lanes for those running backs? And, and the night game atmosphere in uh, at, at Penn State. Uh, even without the whiteout, it's just, uh, it's 106,000 people. Uh, the noise carries louder at night. Um, I, I don't know what the weather's like there, if there's humidity. So if it's no humidity, then it's going to be even louder than that. Uh, I, I can only imagine how loud it is in that stadium. I've been in the big house and I know how loud that is. So, but it, it's pretty, it's, pretty close. It's pretty special. Um, you know, my first year up here was 2019. I believe the first night game I covered was Buffalo that year. And um, to kind of see everyone packing there at night, everyone kind of chanting in unison, everyone kind of being on the same accord, it's special, man. Um, it's definitely a place to visit if you haven't. We got to get you up here maybe in a couple of years, Jim. But, um, you know, pack even if it, even for a non whiteout games at night, the energy level is still at 100. And the fact for Indiana getting this opportunity of playing on national television, this is important for them, Dylan. They 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 can't go out and lay an egg right now. They, they for so many different reasons, recruiting and uh, their own fan base and all of those things. Look, I mean, they have the toughest stretch of the season coming up, right? They have Penn State, Michigan State, Ohio State back to back to back. There's there's not insignificant possibility they're two and five at the end of this. They need to get at least one win out of those three to kind of salvage some semblance of a season. And would help to get the, get the first one, right? Yeah, uh, that Cincinnati game is just going to burn. It's just going to bury in them the rest of the year. That's just going to be. Uh, it's because it's a game they should have easily won. It, although Cincinnati fans don't think that, I don't think Cincinnati's that good. And I think that's going to be. And since you cover Notre Dame, that we'll, we'll, I'll save that. But um, I just don't think Cincinnati's that good. But the fact that Indiana could not overcome their mistakes against a team that I don't think is. You know, I, they're a top 25 team, but Penn State's a top five team. There's a big difference. And you've got to be able to overcome your mistakes. And, and well, and more importantly, you got to stop making mistakes, mistakes, those kind of mistakes. Stop forcing passes that you don't need to throw, interceptions that you don't need to throw, uh, things like that. It just uh, the, they did a, lot, a much better job with the offensive line and their penalties. But now you've got to have great concern. Going into a place like Penn State, the noise, you're not going to be able to hear anything. Everything's going to be on hand signals. Um, how they're going to be able to cope with that. Yeah. No, I mean, that's a valid point. Um, one of the one of the um, things that's worked in Penn State's favor this year, you know, composing or, or comparing again to last year is the turnover margin. I believe they're at five right now, forced to turn over each game they've played. And, um, you know, something that I'm interested to see is Michael Penix. You know, he was so dynamic last year. He's a dual threat guy. Um, you know, obviously, you know, he's a little, I guess, gun shy right now, at least the games that I've seen, and rightfully so, you know, he's got to get, has to get his confidence level back. But um, one of the things that I've watched this season is Penn State's defensive line, even when it's not getting sacked, it's getting back to the quarterback and it's hitting them. You know, I wonder how much of an impact there on, on Michael Pinnock's psyche that's going to have if that happens on Saturday. You know, well, we, and we saw that against Cincinnati, right? Cincinnati, they, they hit Pennix early. 
And then later in the game, he made some poor decisions. One, at least one of the interceptions he threw was with a tackler wrapped around his legs. Uh, and he was trying trying to get the ball out. And it was just, it was a duck because he had no no uh, strength behind it. And so you wonder whether that, not, not even getting to him, but the pressure is going to force him into some poor decisions. Yeah, and, and this is a defense that uh, will, will absolutely not only do that, but capitalize on it. Uh, if you just give them a sliver of hope. So it's going to be interesting to see how this starts out. Indiana cannot get into a hole, uh, and it cannot get off to a bad start. They've got to control the ball, which they did a good job of with against Western Kentucky, but I think part of that's because Western Kentucky just scores the ball so damn fast. Uh, Indiana had it back in their hands. But if they can do that that is probably the only hope i don't see indiana being able to get into a shootout right now they're I just, they just don't seem like they're there yet i think their only hope is they have to be able to run the ball and at the very least control the ball possession keep the ball in their hand as as much as possible no oh, that's a good strategy um i said one of the things that your has really done since he's been here is uh that offense it's, it's fast it's quick man i mean you know, I was watched, what was it, a couple of weeks ago against Auburn, you know, two, three, three play drives, and they're down there scoring. Um, you know, so they don't want to get into a shootout with Penn State because that's I don't think Indiana's built to keep up with them right now at that level. Is Penn State, I know you cover Penn State, uh, is Penn State the best team in the Big Ten? Well, I guess I should start with the Big Ten East first. Are they the best team in the Big Ten East? And we'll find out soon enough, right? I mean, hey, I, I guess I, they're playing very well. I'm impressed. I would, I'd would i be more comfortable once I see a run game that can kind of complement that offense and kind of balance it out a little bit. Um, I'm not saying it's not there. We saw what these running backs did last year. Um, all of the guys returned. Um, the offensive line is just as strong. I just don't know what's not clicking at this point. But uh, if Penn State can find a, a run game, a consistent run game to complement the passing offense, then I think they have the argument to be in that conversation. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I Iowa – is a team that I absolutely also see as a top five team. I, I see them, they, they're very similar to Penn State. Um, I, I think Penn State has a better passing game without question, obviously, but they're, man, that's going to be a hell of a Big Ten championship game if that's how it ends up being. And I, I think for some reason that it might be this year, but who knows? Ohio well, State we'll may find out next regroup. Week when, they, when they go there, Penn State plays at uh, Iowa next week. So uh, that should be an interesting one. And see, that's weird to me. I hate that <laughs> because you're looking at a potential replay in the conference championship, which I, I get with the numbers, they don't have a choice, but I, I hate that there's a possibility of them playing and then playing again. Cause it's always that second game is never usually the same, but when you have levels like that, but at least we get a great game next week. <laughs> no, no, it would definitely be a good game. And I answer a lot of our questions, you know, that's the question right everyone has. Iowa, you know, Penn State, Iowa, Penn State. We'll fi we'll figure that out. And you know, hey, I know people are kind of, you know, they're not too uh, quick to throw any labels on Michigan, but watch out for Michigan too. They've kind of the entire Big right Ten now. East. Yeah, the Big Ten East is jacked up again, Dylan. I mean, I, I already talked to him earlier or, or this week about the record of the top five teams in the Big East has one loss. They're That's fifteen insane. and one. That's yes. insane. And then the Big Ten West is like 12 and 9. Yeah. It, 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 basically, if you went 1 through 7, like with 1 versus 1, like they were planning on doing at the end of last year, the, the Big Ten used to be favored in all seven of those by like a touchdown, I think. I, I saw that on Twitter. Like, it, it, it's wild how unbalanced the divisions are at this point. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. But just brought up Michigan, and, and we've got Ohio State. I don't know what they are just yet. They're obviously good. Michigan looking better. Is this the year that Harbaugh gets the win over Ohio State finally? I mean, no, <laughs> it is not. <laughs> Dylan emphatic on that one. Exactly. <laughs> Why is that, Dylan? Because I'm a Michigan fan and I've watched Michigan for too many years and they do not beat Ohio State. <laughs> when? Back when uh, 15 years ago, I think we're, we're, we're far enough in now that there, there is a pattern discernible. <laughs> oh Schimbeckler, back in the old Schimbeckler days. Yeah, like I, I will, I will believe it when I see it, and until then, I will never pick Michigan to beat Ohio State. Kind of like Indiana beating Purdue in basketball now. There you go. It, it, we're 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 getting we're getting there. It's what uh, nine in a row, ten in a row, something like that. Nine, nine. Yeah. 
Unbelievable. I, I do Unbelievable. think it's a, it's a little bit of an advantage for Penn State to be playing IU this week as opposed to some other teams because otherwise they might be looking forward to Iowa. Yeah. Uh, but they're not they're not going to overlook IU. I don't think that's for sure. No, I mean they've got um they've got one reason not to, and it's that a uh, thirty six and thirty five score last year. If you're asking me, but um yeah, yeah it's going to be interesting. Man, a lot of folks have been waiting a while for this rematch. Yeah. Yeah, and but the revenge thing, I think that goes away as soon as the ball is kicked off because you start sure. playing, you forget about it. Plus, the year before that at at Penn State, Indiana could have won that game. Yeah. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for the early targeting that that took Wap Fillier out right uh, immediately, yeah. and they weren't able to really recover from that. But that was still a, a game that they they had a shot to win that game. But no, if you look at it historically, this this uh, series has been close the past few years. You know, I mean, I joined the beat in 2019, so obviously I wasn't here for a few couple years before that. But you know, in doing research and stuff about this game, I mean, I believe the one down in um, Bloomington a couple years, uh, 2017 or 2018, was a, a couple score game that went in Penn State's favor. You know, so um, hey, if you if if you know. If you trust the his, his history and everything like that, it's going to tell you that this game won't be a slam dunk as, you know, in, in one team's favor as many might think. But um, I, I still think at the end of the day, Penn State holds on and gets a, a thirty-one to seventeen win. That's my uh, that's my projection. Thirty-one seventeen is that that covers the spread too there. So yeah. you're, you you got it all around. 